Well, hey everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we've got a fun one. We're going to talk about open and closed captions in Premiere Pro and how you can apply them. Now, a lot of places like YouTube and, well, I know YouTube, I'm not sure about Facebook, probably though. Uh, YouTube has a great built-in caption generator, but also caption creator if you want to go in and manually add your own captions. But you can do it in post-production. In something like Premiere, you can add open captions, which are not controllable. They just always appear. Or you can add closed captions, which the viewer has you know, the option. You want to turn them on or shut them off or vice versa. Or not really vice versa, just the option to turn them on or off. Now, just a quick side note on this. This is super duper important for Facebook video, Instagram video, particularly Facebook video though. Facebook video, you, you're scrolling through your feed and video automatically starts to play with no audio. So if you use something like open captions that don't need to be turned on, they can't be shut off, it sort of allows a viewer to, in, in a very public place, maybe they're sitting in a library, they don't have their earbuds scrolling through Facebook, it allows them to stop and watch your video and gain something from it without ever having to turn the audio on. And, and just for the record, you've probably seen those like speed recipe videos that go around Facebook and get shared 50 billion times. How many times have you turned the audio on and listened to the elevator music that plays behind them or whatever it is? I don't know. I actually, I've never turned it on. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's somebody talking, explaining it, or just music playing or what. I'm assuming it's probably just music. But that's a great example of uh, forced open captions. Now, you can do open captions through an actual caption creator in uh, Premiere Pro. You could create graphical captions um, in Photoshop. Closed captions is where the caption creator in Premiere is really important. So we're going to talk about creating both of them in Premiere. And we're going to get started right now. So before we really jump into this, I do just want to say I'm using Premiere Pro CC 2017. And some things with working with captions has changed a little bit. A few things have changed a little bit. Um, so if you're not quite able to follow along exactly, um, everything is very similar. But if you're not able to do a couple little things in terms of like dragging some of the captions around on the timeline, um, you're going to be modifying how long they are using the in and out points up here in the captions panel. Um, but we'll kind of get to that when we get to it. So the first thing that I like to do with my video, and this is just a finished project here. So this is a project and I just went through and I added all these captions. You can see all the markers and captions, just, it's a mess. Um, here is the video with nothing added to it. So I have all of my closed caption text uh, over here in this document. Now, this was a video that I shot and we did voiceover for it. So we had an entire script written already. So I was able to just take the script and break it up into lines. Um, so that saved me a lot of times, a lot of time creating the caption. But what I like to do is place my captions on screen and just keep, you know, read through them. Maybe print them out if you have to or throw them on a second monitor. But as I'm playing through the video, I like to play through. And as each caption starts, as soon as she starts to say, a year ago, I made a hooded scarf from remnants of beloved old sweaters. As soon as she starts to say, a year ago, I'm going to make sure I don't have video selected. I don't have audio selected. I'm going to hit the letter M to drop a marker. All right. So let's just watch this here real quick. Marker. All right, so from remnants of beloved old sweaters, and then as soon as she started to stay, it felt cozy and warm. Now, normally I would keep this up side by side on my screen, but we're here in this tutorial window, so it's a little different. I'm gonna play it again. Another marker drop. Marker drops. All right, another marker drops. I felt cozy and warm, and when I put it on, she just started to say that, so I would drop another marker there. So the idea is I place all these markers, at, and then the, I, the the thought is that at each marker will begin a new caption. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete my captions here already on this um, this sequence. So I'm gonna delete them and I'm gonna leave all of my markers that I already have. In fact, I'm gonna delete my little captions item as well. So we're gonna work with this. Let's say we've gone through, we've added all of our markers and again, each marker is placed right where a new line of text begins in your video. Now you can very quickly see it, but also there's a hotkey, Shift M. It takes you to the beginning of the next marker. So you can quickly get to every spot where a caption is going to begin. Very helpful. So we need to begin here creating uh, a caption or a caption item, I should say. And we do that by hitting the new item button and choose captions. Now it's going to say captions, here's width, height, yada, yada, yada. Great, okay. And then it's going to say, hey, new captions. What do you want to do? CEA 607. Uh, 607, this used to be TV captions for most of North America. Um, now I believe it's 708. Uh, did I say 608 before? Yeah, 608 was the old. 708 is the new digital television. Uh, teletext is going to be countries that use PAL. And then we have open captions, which we talked about. These are captions that are much more customizable 
signal, but you can't shut them off. Um, the reason these are important is because if you are if you know you're broadcasting a network television, you need to make sure your captions are baked into your video the proper way so that they can be displayed and rendered on screen uh, correctly when your video or movie or film or show or whatever is broadcast. We're going to go with CEA 708 and just set the stream to service one. Hit OK. There's our captions item down in uh, our projects folder. And now that we have our captions item, we can just select it. You can see up pops this stuff in the captions panel. And by the way, if you don't have the captions panel, go window, captions. It's going to pop this open. It's giving us a default caption that's there. Don't worry about that. We're going to touch on that in just a second. You want to drag the captions item out. I'm going to place it above my video. And then I'm going to hover my mouse to the end of my caption uh, item. And I'm just going to pull it out. I'm going to just move back. And I'm going to scrub it all the way to the end or stretch it all the way to the end of my video clip. All right, great. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this here, if I select the captions item, up pops this and sure enough, type caption here. Um, and if I hover over, I can see that I've got my caption and nothing's appearing. Why is nothing appearing here on my source monitor? I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Well, the reason that nothing's appearing is because I don't have my source monitor set to display captions. I need to hit this little wrench icon and choose closed captions display and choose enable. And, uh-oh, still nothing happens. Why is that? Well, remember, we created these captions. They are the CEA 708 captions. So we need to make sure that it's going to display CEA, uh, CEA 708 captions. So we're going to go close captions, display settings, and right now it's at CEA 608. So we need to make sure we have 708 selected and a stream of service one because we know that's what we created. And sure enough, bam, they appear. How great is that? And now that we're looking at the caption, before we even add any text, uh, we can do things like uh, change the background color. We can make the text a little bit, you know, uh, italicized or underlined. It's very limited with these CEA uh, or teletext uh, captions because, again, they're not burned in there. They have to be displayed. And sometimes you're even exporting the, uh, the captions as like a sidecar file uh, that, you know, something, uh, uh, another system is interpreting and displaying over your video. So there's very limited standards. I kind of actually personally like that because there's at least consistency and I don't want to see like bright yellow captions with some ridiculous black border and you know no black background I don't know I'm just used to like this it's just very utilitarian it's very high contrast it just is I don't know there's something that's right about it to me I don't know uh, but one of the things we can do is change the color of the text we can try you know uh, like a red I'm just personally I'm just gonna stick with white because I'm just not messing around with that I can go to the background color too you see you select background color and you can choose your background color um, or we can choose to make the background just fully transparent which is very difficult to read I'm gonna choose opaque we're gonna leave it at black we're not gonna change any of that stuff one thing that I think we are gonna change is align the caption block to the bottom middle I think I just prefer that I like that a bit and I'll just make sure my text is aligned center as well I don't think it's really gonna matter here but whatever the next thing we want to do is actually grab the caption down here and this is our first caption so we're gonna drag it over here so it begins at our first marker so I'm gonna hit shift M it's gonna take me to the begin that that first marker and I can drag the caption over so it's you know right around right where the the text is gonna start and I know that it's probably gonna run until my next marker so I can grab the end of it and I can pull it right over like that and line it up exactly as it needs to be right beneath that marker <laughs> all right so now what I can do is go to my captions uh, RTF file, this rich text format, and I can just copy a year ago I made a hooded scarf from remnants of beloved old sweaters, Commander Control C, and I can paste it in up here, Commander Control V. And you can see a year ago I made a hooded scarf from res. That doesn't work. Well, so what we need to do is we need to add manual line breaks. So we can see that we can display a year ago I made a hooded scarf from, so right after from, I'm just going to hit enter or return, and it's going to say remnants of beloved old sweaters on a second line. Great. But before we even get to where she begins to talk, we have music, so I want to display that as well. So I'm going to hit this plus icon to add a new caption, and I'm going to drag this caption back before my first caption. You can see it automatically restacks it up here in the captions panel, and I'm going to pull this out over uh, this entire intro, and I've got this little music note icon. It says, hey, look, insert music note. So I'm going to say music, 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 just like that. So now when you begin, you're getting music. Now, notice this. It's not aligning it to the center. And this seems to be a little bit of a glitch within Premiere. Sometimes when you create a new caption, this happens. It doesn't always happen. But if that does happen, just like click one of the positions and then just, you know, any old position. It can be like top left if you want. And then go back to bottom middle. And it's going to align it just correctly for you, just like that. I should also say that get all of your settings... Uh, 
exactly how you want them with your first caption, right? So the you know color of text, the color of the background, and the positioning, right? I'm going bottom center here. It should be. Um, and everything like that, everything you want. If you want italicized text, if you want underline, whatever you want, get it all set here with your first caption because when you create a new caption, it's going to automatically carry the settings from the caption before to the new caption. So you're not going to have to go and continually reset. Um, so here I can go. I can grab another uh, bit of text. And you can just, I mean, you can just really blast through this when you get cranking away at it. I can go ahead and stretch this out, make sure I'm working on that caption. I can go ahead and paste in. It felt cozy and warm. Once again, you can see I'm having an issue with uh, the, the captions block aligning itself. There we go. It's good now. It felt cozy and warm. I can hit Shift M. Well, I got to make sure I'm down here in the timeline. Shift M. It's going to take me to exactly where I need my next caption to begin. And boom, I can place a new caption. I can drag it out to as long as I need it to be. I can go and grab the text and I can paste it in place and so on and so forth. And you can do this uh, as much as you needed. So I felt a quiet sense of and then courage and completeness won't display. Completeness throw, flowed through my body, but I'm probably going to cut it at through so we don't just have one word hanging on down there. And there you go. Three lines of captions all in the same thing. And maybe this is a bit much for one frame. So maybe this would be an area where you would say, look, we need to have a second caption and just say, and when I put it on a quiet sense of courage, and then you can say, and completeness flowed through my body on a separate caption, something like that. Uh, but, you know, that's all up to you. You can do whatever you like when it comes to that. So I'm going to go ahead here and just quickly restore my original uh, close captioned file and have everything in place just the way it's supposed to be ready to export. Now, before we talk about exporting captions, I want to just go over here and let's talk about open captions for a quick second. Let's create a new captions item. Uh, I'm going to say OK, and we're going to say open captions. You can see it's just open captions. Hit OK, and we're going to drag this out and place it over uh, this version version of the video and we're, we're just going to, you know, I don't know, we're going to drag it to the end and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because we have some captions and here you can see that it already looks different um, and I've got some other options like for instance I can choose a, a totally different font if I want and let's go like Arial Black. You can see there that is. I can choose background and say, you know what, I want to... Uh, I want to just reduce the opacity of the background to zero. So I have no background at all. Great. Uh, I'm going to go to the text and let's make the text, make the text like very dark gray. You can hit OK. Great. You can do that. Uh, we can also make the size of the text quite a bit larger. So I can do something like boost the text way up. Um, I can also like select text here. And let's try changing the color of just this text. Maybe make this like a, a deep orange. Hit OK. And you can see we can even change properties of individual words within the captions if you're using open captions. Now, obviously, you can imagine how helpful this would be if you're just displaying something like on-screen directions on a Facebook video like we talked about before, a recipe or, a, you know, showing how to change the brakes in your car or whatever it may be. Uh, you can do that very, very easily. And you can also, obviously, you know, set the position to whatever you want it to be. You can even you know, have these X and Y positions where you can tweak it even further. So a, a ton that you can do here with your open captions uh, in Premiere Pro much more than with uh, with closed captions. Now, obviously, those open captions are going to be burned into your exported video. You can always come back into Premiere and get rid of them if you want, but when you export the video, they're in there. They can't be turned on and off um, like you would be used to with something like closed captions. So just keep that in mind when you're working with open captions. So talking about open captions for a quick moment, let's go on and talk about exporting your captions. So here we go. I've got this document. I'm going to set an endpoint at the very beginning. Hit the letter I. I'm going to go all the way to the end. Hit the down arrow key, takes me to the very end of my last clip. I'm going to hit the letter O, that's my out point. And now I'm going to go File, Export, Media. And here in the media exporter, we got some stuff to look at. So uh, you're probably used to seeing this. You can use a little scrubby here and scrub through your video. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, let's only export like a 30, 35 second uh, portion of this. Remember we set the in out points and source range of sequence in out. We can drag this little bottom slider here and just say, you know what? Eh, export like 30-ish seconds of it. That's a little more manageable here. And uh, if we're going to sit and wait for it, let's make it fast. Um, now, over here, we have the option to look at the captions in our video. We've got some export options. None, which you're not going to have your captions. That defeats the purpose. Create a sidecar file. This creates a literal sidecar file that goes along... Uh, with your video file and this will be delivered to the network uh, with whom you're working so you can ask them what file format's going to work best I know .scc you can upload that even to Facebook along with your video um, in their caption section and you'll get captions on your video so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah uh, all the different file formats different networks different you know uh, just you basically you're going to want to work with whoever you're working with and figure out what works best for them you'll be able to export that sidecar file and deliver it with your video now you can also burn the captions into the video which takes them 
them and sizzles them right onto your video, essentially making them just they, – they, they're forced to appear, uh, much like open captions but without all the extra stylistic garbage. Uh, and then in, embed in output file. This only works on QuickTime movies uh, or MXF files at the moment, and it's kind of wonky at that. Um, but basically, this would allow you to export it and have the option to turn those captions on or off right there in the QuickTime player, let's say, uh, when you're watching it. We're going to roll with something that's kind of straightforward and simple to burn captions into video. And you can see here, it's going to say, look, stream format. We're going to say, yeah, the 708 service one, that's exactly where we placed our captions. I'm going to give this a name, save it to the desktop, and I'm going to name it finished because I roll like that. I know it's like superstitious and everything. You shouldn't do that, but I'm not a superstitious guy, so I don't care. Uh, all right, we've got this little file. We're going to hit export. We're going to pump this thing out in just a few seconds. I'll be back and we'll check it out and see if it worked. Alrighty, there we have it. Let's jump out to our desktop. I'm going to go to the desktop. There it is, finish.mp4. Let's double click to open it up. Make it a little bit smaller here. And let's give it a shot. Hey, look at that. Music icons appear. A year ago, I made a hooded scarf from remnants of the loved old sweater. And there you go. You can see it works. Very, very cool. So you could obviously take this and upload it, display it, di distribute it wherever you like. So that's going to be it for working with open and closed captions in Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a little like on it. Drop a comment below if you feel so inclined. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another tutorial in the future. For working with open captions, closed captions, and everything in between in Premiere Pro. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Daniel Dodson, Tudfit.com. I'll catch you in the next one.